They want to approach, they want to talk to her, but they have like all this fear and anxiety. Oh, if I approach her, I'm, I'm gonna get rejected, I'm gonna fail, and they don't even do anything. So, you know, when it comes to business, you know, maybe you have an idea you want to try, but all this uncertainty and all this fear kicks in, and it's like, oh, I can't do it. And that, that fear of failure stops a lot of people. So, I want, I'm gonna ask the panelists, like, how do you view failure? How do you use it? How do you just, you know, go about, you know, overcoming failure? First, I'm really psyched to have dating advice. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That's a little bonus tonight. Um, we fail fast and we fail often. We, um, I'm a big believer in failure, um, and it happens all the time. And failures come in, and sometimes they look like successes, and sometimes they're clearly failures. But we listen to everything. We are very open to our consumers. They have lots of feedback. Everybody wants their voice to be heard. We're happy to hear it. Um, and we make changes. So the, the, the really terrific thing for all of us that are in tech is that not much is permanent, right? You really get the opportunity to make changes and, and you really can't be emotional about it and you can't be personal about it and it can't be precious to you because then you'll never change anything. So just don't be precious. Get in there and make the changes and do it quickly. And, and, and there's, there's really no sense in lingering. I can't think of a single time where we've ever gone, well, should we or shouldn't we? It's like, no, get it out, change it, move it. And, and, and then if you have to change it back, you can, but we fail fast. Good? Thanks. Uh, for us, when we started out and I talked to clients and I said, we have a goal. If you would give me your business, we can sell twice as many tickets as you're selling now. Uh, failure was very clear. It would be not achieving that goal or in worst case, maybe even hurting their business, not selling as many as they were before. Um, and I thought that that was a major, major obstacle. I think what we found over the last year and a half is that failure doesn't really exist for us. There's momentum and if we have it, if we're working with these clients on experiments because I think that this test or this marketing technique is going to increase your sales, it either increases their sales or they and we become more expert at what doesn't work for their business and what they need to do next to try to increase their sales. So as long as we're moving forward and doing experiments and working with clients to solve that issue, even when we do fail, if it's a failure that contributes to our overall knowledge, it really feels like a success to them and some of those clients have been our best clients that have had the, the worst experiments. So. So I think there's a Paul Graham saying that solve prob hard problems fast. And I think when we think about how we, we work, we're very focused on a single problem. If we're chasing more than one thing, we're not doing it right. So we're chasing one problem and we're trying to find a solution to that problem quickly, find a lot of people who have that problem so we can monetize the solution to that. And when we think about a specific problem and, and doing that really quickly, it means you're gonna make some mistakes along the way. Because when you move fast, you inevitably make assumptions that may or may not be true, but you really need a lot of essentially checks and balances. So when you make an assumption and you implement a solution, like measure that solution. And if the measurement doesn't come up to your expectation or, or what actually solves the problem, then essentially write the ship. And we do that a lot. Like we'll probably weekly make a mistake that, um, is repairable, but maybe wasn't the appropriate mistake to make. And as you make more of those mistakes, you start to see what they look like ahead of time. You start making less of them, but especially in the beginning, you're going to make a lot of mistakes, but it's having the perseverance to, to change them and to uh, do it better the next time. Our approach was to actually create essentially a failure budget, which was our CFO came to me and said, you can spend X amount of dollars trying things out and uh, hopefully you'll have more you know, wins than losses. But uh, we, uh, we dipped into that a little bit, but we ran actually 50 experiments after getting into the lean startup methodology last year. And while um, most of them were actually failures, we ran them for two weeks at a time. And so pretty quickly we would find out that this thing wasn't working and we would stop it. 
and the value that we got from the ones that worked actually exceeded, even in the short time period, even though there were fewer of them, they were more valuable than the failures. But what was even better than that is out of the 50, I think it was something like 40 of them failed, 10 succeeded. We still made money off of that, but then we could take those 10 and put them in on our production site running 100% of traffic. So they became even more valuable. So we kind of just started with this idea of this failure budget. We're willing to try this out. We can cost ourselves up to X amount. And then if things work out, we can obviously make them sort of full features of the site. And it ended up working out. And we're, um, like I said, we did 50 experiments with many, many failures, but still uh, enough successes to, to count for uh, positive value last year. We, uh, we value taking risks, and that's a part of why we, we make investments with partners. Um, and as a part of that, we intentionally will take bigger risks when we believe there are bigger rewards involved. Um, and and the, thing, the thing that's important about that is that we, we know we're going to fail in some of those risks, but we're intentional about it, and we, you know, we take risks that shoot high. You know, should we fail? We fail. We understand that. We move on quickly. But um, if you're afraid to take a risk or you're afraid to take a big risk, um, you're, you're going to fail simply because you weren't willing to take the risk. You know, failure to move forward um, is, is far worse than taking a shot and failing. And, I, and I'm not advocating being reckless. Like I said, we, do, we take risk intentionally. But take a risk, intentionally take a risk, intentionally take a big risk for the opportunity of a big reward. And, you know, and, and don't be afraid to take those risks because failure is a part of the process. If you're not failing, you didn't try. Every one of these guys started a thought in my head about failure. Um, how many guys in here are entrepreneurs? Guys and gals, excuse me. Try it again, please. Hands up in the air. Okay, how many of you guys have done something and failed? I should see every hand. If I see one hand go down, you're not an entrepreneur. <laughs> Okay, there's one cool thing about taking a risk when you're an entrepreneur that is hugely different from going to a casino. Does anybody know what that is? You can control a lot more of the risk. You can. A lot of it depends on you and what you do on a daily basis. My failures can, get, can be just as much as forgetting to wake up at 6.30 and my guy in New York has already been texting me, the server's down. It could be something as huge as the project's a flop, forget it, throw it out, we don't want to deal with it anymore, and we just wasted 150000 But, as he said, taking a big risk, as long as you know what kind of risk you're taking, taking a big risk is a lot better than taking a little one. And with Zappos, it was the same idea. By the way, you guys want another one? I got a project for you. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Hey, might as well ask. He's here, right? <laughs> a couple other things. If anybody, has any of you, do any of you have any idea of that little um, square thing that you can stick all over the place? What are those things called? QR code. QR no, no, not that. That's. I'm talking about the little sheet of paper that you can stick on the. Post-its. Did you guys know that's a failure? Yes. <laughs> for those of you that know, so for those of you that don't know the story, the guy that created post-its was trying to create a better super glue than crazy glue and failed miserably. And at the end of it all said, well, it still sticks to something. Let's see what we can do with it. <laughs> Look what he came up with, right? He failed. I'll give you one of the best ones. And I don't know if any of you know this one either. You guys remember a guy by the name of Ed Franklin? Yeah. You heard of him, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit? OK. Do you guys know that he was probably one of the worst lecturers of his time? He was constantly hitting on women. <laughs> You know what his theory was? One out of 100 is going to say yes. <laughs> so he'd fail 99 just to get to the one. So how much are you willing to do? And how many times are you willing to fail to be able to make it to what all of these have made it to? Using a lean startup methodology, you've got you to gotta do it. That's all there is to it. We've, we've all been there. We've all failed. If you don't fail, you're not going to learn. If you don't learn, no one's going to be able to help you figure out what it is you're after and what you're trying to build. I just want to say one, two things. One of them is I'd love to have a failure budget. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't have that. Um, 
although it's probably all that. And the other thing is that I think what's really important is that you just stay really true to your vision. Your vision can change. You can like, this isn't working. I'm getting out of the kids space. I'm going to go do something else. But as long as I'm here and kids and music, if it isn't about kids and music, we're not going to do it. So really, really, really keep your vision clear. And that's, yeah. it, 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 as long as that's true and you're committed to that, then it's not a failure. It's just a lesson. Nice. Okay, so actually this is a new website I just recently...